Modern developments in science in the 20th century allowed human race to achieve dizzy heights in technological advancements. With the Second World War drawing to a close, the desire to rebuild lives and nations and more specifically the aspiration to put technology to good use took wings amongst the major world powers. The launch of Sputnik 1 and Sputnik 2 in 1957 by Soviet Union kicked off the space race. Not to be left behind, US Army launched Explorer 1 satellite in 1958. In April 1961, Yuri Gagarin of Russia became the first man to orbit Earth. In 1969, one small step by Neil Armstrong on Moon truly became a giant leap for the mankind. While the major world powers competed in the space race for other purposes, in early 60s, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai laid the blueprint of Indian space program which was starkly different and focused mainly on the use of space technology for benefit of the common man. But it was not that simple. This brought new technological challenges when development of indigenous rocket technology began. These small initiatives led to the development of Indian launch vehicles, the seeds of which were sown long ago in early 60s by a great son of India, a visionary an incredible institution builder, Dr. Vikram Ambalal Sarabhai. In my uh, opinion, the aspect of space research, which I would like to stress most, is in relation to the national capability, the self-confidence that this will generate. And if I uh, were to give my own evaluation of this, I think the benefits of these far outweigh uh, all the rest that we have been talking about. Amongst the most important practical applications of space research he had in mind were those related to meteorology and communications. He got it going step by step. Dr. Sarabhai was successful in convincing the government of India to take steps to venture into a space program. His efforts bore fruit when in August 1961, the government formed Indian National Committee on Space Research in Kospar within the ambit of Department of Atomic Energy. It was chaired by Dr. Sarabhai. Physical Research Laboratory, PRL, was identified as Center for Research and Development in Space Science. The Indian Space Program thus made a modest beginning with a small budget and a low profile. His next agenda was to find a suitable location to establish a sounding rocket research and development center. He established the Thumba Equatorial Rocket Launching Station, TIRLS, at Tiruvannandapuram in 1963. He sent a small group of scientists to Godard Space Flight Center and the Wallops Island facility of NASA in USA for training. Sounding Rocket Program of India was initiated by collaborative agreements with NASA, CNES of France and Hydro Meteorological Services of USSR. CNES supplied the radar and Russians supplied the Minsk computer. Americans offered the Nike Apache rocket and the necessary training. Many weighty names in science and technology gathered for the occasion and the world was watching. The very next day after the launch of Nike Apache, Dr. Sarabhai shared his dream of developing a satellite launch vehicle with a steam. Four teams were assigned the task of designing the SLV, of which the third design, SLV-3, was selected for implementation. Dr. Sarabhai established the Space Science and Technology Center, SSTC, with the mandate of developing indigenous satellite launch capability and allied technologies. It was set up on Valley Hill, very near to Turles. The Indian government later gave go-ahead of SSTC for manufacturing a series of indigenous sounding rockets. This later grew into the largest ISRO center and was later named as Vikram Sarabhai Space Center. Dr. Sarabhai brought experts from outside to SSTC for their inputs and guidance. But Dr. Sarabhai seemed to do more than merely support his men. 
he gave them a dream. The early rockets were fairly elementary and rigged out of ready-made seamless aluminium tubes with fins and a nozzle. The first Rohini series rocket RH-75 was successfully flight tested in November 1967. After sounding rockets, a major milestone in the journey of Indian space program was achieved on 18th July 1980 with the first successful flight of indigenous launch vehicle SLV-3 having a capability to place 40 kilograms payload into the low earth orbit. After the success of SLV-3, competence was built up for overall vehicle design, materials, hardware fabrication, solid propulsion technology, control power plants, avionics, vehicle integration checkout and launch operations. Indian space program also continued to develop key infrastructure by instituting new centers and augmenting the existing ones. The facilities in Shar were suitably increased to support large number of missions. This center was later renamed in 2003 as Satish Dhawan Space Center Shar. SLV-3 provided the platform for the Augmented Satellite Launch Vehicle Project. Development of ASLV was another challenge and achievement for the ISRO. The first successful flight of ASLV in 1992 paved the way for learning many new nuances of launch vehicle design and proved to be a technological bridge for realization of present-day launch vehicles. The sight of a launch vehicle liftoff defying the Earth's gravity is an awe-inspiring experience. The underlying principle of rocket is fairly easy to understand. When a rocket motor ignites, a huge amount of high-velocity exhaust of burning propellants ejected from it, which, as per the principle of Newton's third law of motion, creates a net upward thrust in the opposite direction and the launch vehicle is propelled upward. However, putting it into practice to make a modern launch vehicle is extremely challenging and only a few countries in the world have been able to master this technology so far. The vehicle liftoff is initiated by the burning of bottommost stage. As this stage burns completely, it is shut off and separated from the vehicle. This makes the launch vehicle lighter and helps in increase of velocity. Separation is followed by ignition of the next stage, which powers the vehicle further, and the process follows on until the vehicle attains the necessary velocity and position to inject the payload into the orbit. A modern launch vehicle is composed of different stages, which are packed with different types of fuels and host of highly complex mechanical, electrical, electronic and avionic systems. The performance of each stage is crucial to the overall performance of the launch vehicle, which generally use different types of propellants. ISRO presently employs solid, earth-storable liquid and cryogenic fuels. The technology for all three is completely different and has been learned and mastered in a hard way. Making solid fuel, casting it into a rocket motor is not only a difficult and a delicate process, it is also very risky. Special procedures and technologies have been evolved over long period to safely carry this out. Similarly, the earth storable liquid propellants have their own challenges as these are highly corrosive and explosive in nature requiring special production and safe handling techniques. Cryogenic stages carry liquid hydrogen LH2 as fuel and liquid oxygen LOX as oxidizer. LOX is stored at minus 183 degrees Celsius while LH2 is stored at minus 253 degrees Celsius in two separate tanks. The technology challenge includes management of cryogens stored at extreme sub-zero temperatures to high temperatures of ignition and combustion. 
द सक्सेसफुल डेवलपमेंट ऑफ विक्रम ए साराभाई विकास लिक्विड फ्यूल इंजन बाय इसरो इन द 1988 वाज अनदर मेजर माइलस्टोन सिंस देन इट इज अ वाइटल कंपोनेंट ऑफ ऑल लॉन्च व्हीकल्स दिस डेवलपमेंट पाथ लेड टू रियलाइजेशन ऑफ रिलायबल वर्कहॉर्स लॉन्च व्हीकल द पोलर सैटेलाइट लॉन्च व्हीकल पीएसएलवी इन 1994 when it successfully placed IRS P2 in the orbit let us now take you through a series of events in a typical launch of a PSLV despite the series of resounding successes of PSLV the engineering teams can never afford to relax their guard even for a moment as the launch date approaches one senses a palpable heightening of alertness and keenness in the air as the rocket stages stack upwards the excitement builds up almost in direct proportion the first stage ps1 is also known as the core stage this 20 meter long stage uses solid propellant and weighs approximately 138 tons strap on boosters are attached to the core stage to augment it and generate the required lift off thrust Each booster is 12 meter long and weighs about 12 tons. Stacked above the core stage is the 12.8 meter long second stage, equipped with a Vickers engine which uses 41 tons of earth storable liquid propellants. The composite third and fourth stages now begin their journey towards the assembly building. This moment means a lot to the development team. The flag off is always marked by a spontaneous cheer and a round of back slapping. These stages will get assembled on top of earlier solid PS1 and liquid PS2 stages. The moment has come for the mobile service tower to part company with PSLV and it rolls away to a safe distance. From now on, the umbilical tower is the point of contact for fueling, battery charging, monitoring and other purpose as the time for launch approaches the vehicle blasts off majestically taking its payload into the space in last 3 decades pslv has successfully launched more than 55 indian and about 345 foreign customer satellites from as many as 34 countries It is today a popular choice internationally for providing economical access to space. Over the years, PSLV has also undergone many technological upgradations. It is available in core alone, six strap-on and XL versions. It is a versatile launch vehicle for variety of polar and geosynchronous missions. It has also proven its capability for launching multiple satellites in a single mission. Its capability of engine restart of the upper stage has further enabled it to launch satellites in different orbits in the same mission. In XL version, PSLV can launch a payload mass of 1.75 tons to low earth orbit. PSLV was also instrumental in launching landmark missions like Chandrayaan-1, the Mars Orbiter mission, MOM, and has also created world record of launching 104 satellites in one mission. It was a quantum jump over its predecessors in terms of technology and capability, and its design allows easy configuration changes to suit different types of missions. It is also capable to carry and inject multiple satellites into different orbits. PSLV has two solid and two liquid propulsion stages. It can be configured for higher lift-off thrust with addition of strap-on boosters. While the advancements were continuously carried out on this vehicle, work was also initiated for launch vehicles of higher capability like geosynchronous launch vehicle GSLV Mark II and LVM3 At this time ISRO was confronted with a huge challenge for developing indigenous cryogenic upper stage which provides higher thrust for every kilogram of propellant 
and was a key to achieve self-reliance in injecting satellites in geosynchronous orbit. After successfully clearing many obstacles and continued focused efforts, ISRO finally succeeded in developing C-12 cryogenic upper stage. The first successful flight of GSLV Mark II with indigenous cryogenic stage took place in January 2014 when GSLV Mark II D5 launched GSAT-14 satellite. It is now an operational vehicle capable of launching two-ton class of satellites into geostationary transfer orbit. This greatly boosted confidence of ISRO in its design and development approach and paved way for the development of heavy lift LVM-3. The first successful experimental flight of LVM-3 took place in 2014 when the vehicle took a crew module to suborbital height. This was followed by two developmental flights in 2017 when it injected GSAT-19 and in 2018 when it injected GSAT-29 into its intended orbits. LVM-3 successfully launched Chandrayaan-2 spacecraft into its planned orbit on 22nd July 2019 from the second launch pad at Satish Dhawan Space Center, Shar Sri Harikota. On 23rd May 2016, ISRO successfully flight tested India's reusable launch vehicle technology demonstrator, RLV TD, first wing body aerospace vehicle operating in hypersonic flight regime from Satish Dhawan Space Center, Sri Harikota. In this flight, Critical technologies such as autonomous navigation, guidance and control, reusable thermal protection system and re-entry mission management have been successfully validated. ISRO is also developing small satellite launch vehicle SSLV to carry 500 kg micro and small satellites into 500 km orbit. With large number of stellar achievements, ISRO continues to march ahead to design more advanced heavy lift launch vehicles with capabilities up to 10 tons. For this purpose, current programs include development of a 2000 kN semi-cryogenic engine. With a humble entry into the space arena, India has leapfrogged to the front ranks of countries engaged in launch vehicle technology. If the past is any indication, there is every reason to believe that ISRO will succeed in all its future endeavors.